Here is where you can experience history. The Nevada Railroad is a living, breathing, operating, historic railroad. This is real. Instead of relics in glass cases or repainted old equipment on static display, here you witness a working 19th century steam railroad. It's gritty, it's dirty, it smells of coal smoke, creosote, and sweat. Locomotives whistle off, cars clang as they all couple together, and the wheels squeal as a locomotive is turned on the rye. Today, the Nevada Northern Railroad is the last of its kind, the sole survivor from a grand era of railroads in the Silver State. Now a National Historic Landmark, it's America's best preserved short line railroad and complete rail facility still in existence. Join me as I climb aboard a steam-powered passenger train and travel back into the last century. Two minutes you out here. What? Check the coupling. I'll be right there. All your smoke and that goes down through the tube, there's actually helps keep the water on the tube. I'll just press on that metal gently. You can hear it? Right there. I want you the first rule is that I'll show you the firebox. See, it's pretty deep. Yeah. I'm going uphill. I got to I got to hit all the way to the other side. Oh wow! So I'm gonna need you out of the way most okay. of the time going uphill. Coming downhill, it's a different thing. We're all in a better mood. I'm not exhausted. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll have more time to visit. But going up, there's a lot of cold. <laughs> all the way back unless I got room to swing it. Okay, that's that for now. Anyway, as I was saying, once he's going to have to stand over there, you got to stay out of his way and once to stand over here. Okay. A lot of motion in here. Make sure you're hanging on. You do not hang your head out the window. Now you can ask me any questions you want. I might say just a minute. Sure. Okay. The crown sheet. The what? The crown sheet. This one here? Yeah. You right there? Oh, okay. Now if you read that, I don't know if you can read it. Or oh, number three, 34 and 42. Okay, but our we should have 135 pounds of steam on there. Yes. Well, so this is, um, the, the most of these are the same. Well, this shows the level of water in the boiler. So if it gets much above here, this is the throttle, if it gets much above here, then uh, the water starts going in where the steam should be in the cylinders, and we don't want that. If it gets below this point right here, see that line? Yeah. That's the top of where the firebox is. So if the water doesn't cover that, the firebox melts, 190 pounds, 170 pounds of pressure come in, it makes a mess. The engine be rolling and we might lose the tell about it, but... I got it. So that's why by federal regulation, there's two of these. To make sure that uh, one don't work, you got a backup, right? Well, then I got this here to back up too. This will tell me... I got in it too. That's steam. Mm -hmm. And this will emit steam into the injector. And there's a venturi valve that's forcing the uh, water into the boiler. It uses the steam's own, the boiler's own pressure to push more water into the boiler through a venturi valve. Okay, I've got a few more coals to put on. This engine right here is all over a million passengers. You can imagine. We used to haul school children from the school to the high school. How many of these things are left in the in the world? I have no idea. 
I don't know of any other place, especially on the East Coast, that you can ride on a real steam edge. You right. see them in a museum and you just look at them, you know? Yeah, there's nothing like this. The Curator Technology at Smithsonian says this is the best preserved rail facility on the entire continent. I believe it. Like 40 years ago, when uh, Kennecott closed the mine down, they just left this, the whole railroad to the city and county in lieu of Texas. And we just, no one could bring themselves to tear it all down. So that's when a group of volunteers got together. Now, some of the people that worked on the railroad the whole time uh, put it back together so you all could enjoy it. Just so I could enjoy it, I mean, a few hundred miles here. Al lives here, but I come up a few times a year and shovel coal. That's an idea of fun. Right. Where do you fill her up in water? Um, at the shop. We've always been on, uh, on pressure water uh, here. We had uh, uh, water towers up at Cherry Creek, but here we've always been on pressure water. Did you see the uh, water column? Mm -hmm. Like I mean, it's the, still up to city water. But with the still, boot on the end? And yeah, we, we fill up there occasionally. Okay. But then in the shop, we also have pressure oh. water. Where's the tank oh, the, for the water? No, it's, 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 the, it's the rest of the tender that doesn't hold coal. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you got spare water to so add, add in, huh? Add well, that's in. where all the water comes from. Oh, okay. So when I operate this, it's forcing water from the tender. It applies the pressure and gets okay. it into the boiler. And that one is... Adding water to the So this is the primer and this now you want to get yours? Can you get yours? This is clear for 50 cars now. Okay, let's see how it It's starting. It's okay. Got a thing. Switching rail. Great. Great. Two um, cars.
They're all good, right? Okay. We're set. Secure.
After my ride, I went into the shop and watched as century-old techniques are taught and showed us by one of the original engineers who used to run on the Northern Nevada Railroad. This 56-acre historic complex includes over 70 buildings and structures and the oldest was built in 1906. The museum collection consists of four original steam locomotives six original diesel locomotives and over 60 pieces of original rolling stock. The oldest dates to 1872 when President Ulysses S. Grant was in the White House. I hope you enjoyed coming back in time with me and it was a ride of a lifetime and this experience I will never forget. <laughs>